Awol, Shalom, Shalom Rastafari. Yes, greeting brothers and sisters. We want to get right into this piece right here. This is going to be a follow-up. This is actually a follow-up. Let me bring this screen here to a posting that we just made on the Islamo-fascist terrorism in Africa. We call it Black Israel versus Amalek. Black Israel, the Beta Israel at home and abroad versus Amalek. All right? And the Amalek wars. Jah says, Yah says that there'll be war against Amalek from generation to generation. Now, the best way to really understand this in Christ, in the Moshiach, remember what Christ said, what the Moshiach said, Yeshua? He says that you, you, you search the scriptures and you think that you have eternal life in the scriptures. In other words, we do our Bible studies and we say, okay, eternal life is in this, you know, and we think that we can find eternal life in the scriptures. But Christ, the Moshiach, our black Lord and, and Savior, says that, um, these are they which testify of me. So this is very important for us to understand as the true Beta Israel in spirit and in truth. All right? This is very, very important that we have to study the Old Testament, speaking of the Torah, which is the law, the foundation, the, 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 the prophets, or the Nabim, or Navim as modern um, European Jews and the modern Hebrew speakers will say Navim instead of Nabim. We say Bamarinya in the good is we say Nabiyat, the prophets, Nabi, plural Nabiyat. Um, and the Tehillim, the Tehillim are the Mizmure Dawit, the Psalms of David, right? Or in the Arabic, they say the Zabur, the Zabur, right? So we posted this particular piece right here, right? Um, and some of the comments that came in were, were interesting. And then we, then we came across this particular comment again, the whole thing about Zion and Zionist. And now for those of us who have reclaimed our birthright and also have begun or have been studying to show ourselves approved to God, the true God, the true God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, the Moshiach Yeshua. You know, as workmen and workwomen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, we know that Zion, more properly, Zion instead of Zion, right? It refers to the, for lack of a better word, as Edward Ullendorf wrote a book with the title, you can probably look it up, if you can get a copy, get a copy. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a copy right now, but this book is called African Zion. If you check out I and I piece, it should still be up there, whether connected with one of our uh, more official web pages or some of the other fellowship sites out there. It's called African Zionism. African Zionism. Now, this is a big issue, but let's first of all, just go from where this particular inspiration, or really not inspiration, the inspiration comes from Yah, you know, in, in the name of the Moshiach. But this motivation, right, we're motivated now to reason and articulate on Zionism, black and white, Rastafari Zionism versus so-called Ashkenazi, so-called Zionism, or um, Khazarian, this modern, really Rothschilds, the Rothschilds. All right, And I think that if we don't really begin to distinguish all that we're learning, because, you know, the Bible says that there would be a time when people will be forever learning, but never able to come to the acknowledgement of the truth. And I've noticed that, um, you know, I've noticed that as, as you grow in consciousness, in Christ consciousness, in the Moshiach, as, as, as you get mature, in other words, hearing Everyone referred to Zion and Zionism as something that belongs to those who call themselves Jews, according to the scriptures, or the European Jews, and totally neglecting the fact that the Lord Sheep of the Beit Israel are black people, if you please. Therefore, the African Zion or Zion, Zion, is a black reality, and it's it doesn't really amaze me. It, it, it shocks. It, it even 
on a certain level, uh, we're speaking English, right? So please bear with me. Um, it's somewhat horrific that even some of our so-called Rastafari people will still get into this, um, this, this white Jew Zionist sort of thing, you know, like, like they, they'll start talking against Zion, not recognizing or perhaps forgetting that the true Zion, just like it was says um, many who call themselves Jews and are not, and we get to recognize they are ones who have converted to Judaism, but the prophecy says in the latter days that he will raise a people, that a people will be born, as it were, in a day or in a moment, at an instant. And, we're, and this is what we're witnessing right now. So when I looked at some of the comments on um, Islamo-fascist terrorism in Africa, it was inspired or it was actually referred to I and I um, by a brother in um, Wendy Monley. Um, he pointed out, you know, did we see what's going on in Mali and, 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 and um, the, the Timbuktu area, West Africa area. And no doubt you might recall that we pointed this particular booklet, this book by Rudolf R. Windsor from Babylon to Timbuktu. And those who have studied that, well, you already know that, you know, that's, that's a part of I and I, our story as the once lost but now found. 400 years later, it does not matter. But there are ones who are seeking to destroy, you understand, any remnants. Because there's still records over there. There's still records that speak to us. This is why we, we posted the most recent series of videos concerning the so-called um, Islamo-fascists. Now, one um, particular commenter made a comment. We're just going to cut to the chase. A comment about... Um, they said, uh, this is Samson 12321, um, which said that um, Islamists are not targeting anyone. Wow. The Islamists are not targeting. We see the video. You understand? We have actual um, testimonies of this. But they're going to tell us that we're to believe them and our eyes are lying to us. So what we see and what we witness when we see black peoples, you know what I'm being killed in this Islamo-fascist, Mohammedan, religious, by Hagas, by Hagar's children. We're supposed to Hagarins, as the scripture says in, I think, Psalm, what, 80, 83? In Psalm 83, it's a very, very important Psalm, Psalm 83. You know what I'm saying? Because Africa is our I and I homeland. And, and the Beta Israel better really recognize we're not talking about um, we're not talking about uh, the Hamites in this sense, like the Hamites. We have to really relook at everything through Jaws, through God's spectacles. You know, since so we have this the information age, a lot of information is going to and fro, and we have to look over these things, research them, and really. Um, Way in balance to find the truth for ourselves. You're saying, and stop being divided and conquered about these issues that many of us might still be ignorant about. Instead, let's do the research, let's share these things. And I ask you to weigh in on this, my brothers and sisters. But it is Psalm 83. Psalm 83 really mentions what we see going on right now. You're saying, around I and I promising the Horn of Africa. You're saying, the Horn of Africa. Um, and you have to remember what. what what the Most High said to Abraham in um, Genesis chapter, chapter, was it 15? Chapter 15. Chapter 15. It's interesting. And let me just put this right here for you all. Do we still have that map? Is that map? Oh, great. Hallelujah. The map is, the map is here. So let's first of all go to the scripture. It's still a little bit hot, you know, like, wow, this weather. But, you know, um... I and I, I and I hope to endure into the end of Babylon and into the new millennium. So we have to just, you know, stay hydrated, so forth. So here, here, here's it. Genesis chapter 15. Now we know the prophecy in Genesis chapter 15 is speaking is speaking of what is known as um, the great horror, the horror of great darkness that fell upon Father Abraham. In verse 13 it says, and he, and and Ha Elohim. The true God said to Abram, Abram was a black Assyrian, a black Syrian. I and I ancestor Abraham, you know. Um, 
those people, you know, we see the Syrians today, and we see a lot of these people who say the Egyptians today, but we know that they are Johnny come lately, that there's been a lot of displacement of peoples. There's been a lot of taking of other people's lands, you know what I'm saying, and taking and co-opting of other people's cultures, too. And in this time of um, knowledge and information going to and fro, a lot of things that have been suppressed and buried are once again getting an opportunity to come to light. Anyway, he, he said to Abram, know of a surety that thy seed, and seed equals race, shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. 400 years. Now, it's interesting because there's a, there's a few different ways that we calculate this 400-year period, give or take, from one particular, where we, where we go 1492, and the so-called um, Christopher Columbus coming to the Americas at 400 years. That's the son of man, Lich Teferi. You know, and in the heart of I and I, African Zion, Sion, and that is Ethiopia. But not all Ethiopians, all right, uphold the Holy Covenant. So we, we have to understand this very, very carefully. This is why some of the Hebrew Israelites are correct when they say, um, you know, ye Ethiopians shall perish by my sword, which is what, the, what Yahweh Jah says in um, Zephaniah, I think it's Zephaniah 2 and 12, they're, they're quite, quite correct. It's just like it says, not all who are of Israel are Israel. You know what I'm speaking not just to those who may be racially Israel. In other words, they may be our color, but spiritually, according to the al Kidan, according to the Banai Barit, according to the Holy Covenant, they are not Jah's kind of folks. So it's not just a so-called racial thing. This is one thing we have to understand. Yet the race, you know, saying ethnicity, all these are identifying marks. You know, saying all of this, all this comes into, you know, like you know, when when you put when you compute all that data, in order to get a a a full or full wow, it, it really is hot in here. So excuse me, brothers and sisters. You know, we just gonna go through with this because this is very very important. So. 400 years, so we can look at that, or we can look at the founding of the Jamestown, Virginia colony that's mentioned in How to Make a Slave, because when, when the English queen came to America during um, the time of when George Bush reigned as president up here in America, she came for the 400th anniversary of the founding of the Jamestown, Virginia colony. So you can look at that and say, okay, Maybe you don't want to accept 1492, 1892, the Son of Man, but you got to recognize this is a 400-year thing. You understand? And the founding of the Jamestown, Virginia colony is interesting because when you look at that, how to make a slave, and you put it all together, you understand? We have proof positive. But let's go forward. So it says right here, it says, And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. Right, so let's scroll a little bit forward to verse 18. In the same day, the yod he wow he or Yahweh, made a covenant. He made a covenant, a al kidan, a word agreement, a benai barit, a covenant, right, with Abram, the black Assyrian, right, saying to thy seed. Now, seed equals race. Seed equals race a particular race, and we're speaking about the black race of Abraham, have I given this land? Now, here's the important thing we have to know. Remember, Psalm, Psalm 83 will explain a lot of what is going on presently vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, um, this Islamo-fascism. I think we talked about it a little bit in the previous posts, right? Well, let's clear this. And what's interesting is that even this, Torah portion that we're in, the RSS number 40, or Balak, right, speaking about Balaam and prosperity, the prosperity, so-called preachers or pimps, the prophet, and the prophet, prophet for hire, and the prophet for sale, you understand, know Balak, Moab, you know what I'm saying, remember, these also were Hebrew peoples, the Moabites were Hebrew peoples, even the Medeanites were Hebrew peoples, even Esau, is a Hebrew technically, if you say Abraham is a Hebrew, that means that which comes from him would also be a Hebrew if 
That's if that is the interpretation of Hebrew. You understand? So let's understand that. So just because we say we're Hebrews, yes, we are Hebrews, but even the Hebrews don't get along together. Don't you recognize that it says that in the latter days, kingdom shall rise against kingdom, and, and people, a nation against nation, and tribe against tribe, because Satan, curse be he, his strategies divide and conquer. Just like right now we as Rastafari and the Hebrew Israelites and the different Ethiopian and other kind of groups are kind of divided. You got, you got like the Moors that say, well, we are Moabites, right? Okay, you got the Hebrew Israelites saying we're Israelites, but we don't deal with Ethiopia because Ethiopians are Hamites, they say. But if they were to read the Kippur and the Guess, according to Kippur and the Guess, the true Solomonic Davidic um, um, covenant and rulers say that we are Shemites. So, so what's the difference? Okay, we're going to get into that. Even the whole Ham, Shem, and Japheth thing, if you really look up the whole idea of Semite, anti-Semite, these are recent, these are recent coinages of words that came along when the European Jews and others, the converts to the Khazars, if you please, or the Edomites, they came forward, and so they started to coin special words to put them in a distinction of their own. But this is not the, the, the language of the Bible. This is not what the Torah, you know what I'm saying? So we talk about Shemite, you know what I'm saying, today. It's a little bit confusing because the Bible does not refer to it like that because this is a latter day, you know what I'm saying, this is a latter day um, interpolation. So we're going to clear this right here because we're about to go into the 41st and some of y'all uh, no doubt seeing some of the other portions that we put up, American, um, um, Balaam, you understand, Balaam, you know, making that sort of a connection right there. Basically, they couldn't curse us, right, from the 60s, so what they had to do was demoralize us. If you look at black people in America over the past 40 years, they've been so demoralized that we are being cursed, and just like in the Bible, there's a plague, whether you want to call it AIDS, whether you want to call it ignorance, you know what I'm saying, there's a plague, whether you want to call it black-on-black -black violence and crime or, or a gang-related activity, whether you want to call it drugs or you know, crack, the crack generation, there's a plague on this people. You know what I'm saying, and your prosperity preachers and pastors and pimps, they are not telling you the truth. You know what I'm saying, so let's, let's clear this for a moment so we can articulate this portion right here that we want to touch on. Zion and Zionism. What is Zion and what is Zionism? You know what I'm saying? Because, you see, when they say Zionism, the question that we should ask is, well, who's Zionism? What, what do you mean by Zionism? Instead of automatically, in other words, when we do that, we waive, not just our right, but we waive in a sense. Remember, Zion, what was Zion? Zion was the palace of David, was the palace that David took back from the Jebusites. Now, the Jebusites are Canaanites. And according to some of our teachers, like the um, Nawabians and, 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 and Dr. York and others, and we even agree with that point of view based on the evidence, you can see that the Jebusites, you know, who were Canaanites, have a connection even with the modern so-called Jews. You understand the Jews and the Edomites. So you see different peoples got together, and this is why we have other names of people nowadays that are not directly linked with the ancient biblical names. So this is why we have to study and show ourselves approved. But right here, the first thing we want to deal with is what is that land that has been given to us? You understand? So when we talk about Zionism, when we speak about Zionism, we're speaking about our own thing, if you please. We're not talking about the so-called European Jews, so forth and so on, and we're not necessarily even speaking against the so-called European Jews. Now, someone will say, what do you mean? Because they took our heritage, they took our, that's not what the Bible says, that's not what Torah says, it says that the people turned their backs on Jah's word, and Jah allowed the enemies to come from the north, a nation who, who had a tongue that the people didn't understand, who would have no compassion, no mercy on them, and would take them far from their land, and they'll be spread to the four winds of the earth. You understand? And there's even a prophecy that would come into Egypt. You understand? A type of Egypt. We spoke about the spiritual 
Egypt of today, even BC and the and the empire cities, London, Rome, DC are types of even New York to extend are types of Egypt this. It's all part of that prophecy right there. But anyway, let's touch on this right here. Okay, Africa. You see Africa right here? Now the reason why I want to point to this is we first have to understand what is our inheritance. Some of our Israelite people will say, oh, this is Hamite place. That's where we came from. That's not ours. And they will only claim this little strip of land right up here, which is so-called um, Palestine, or what ones would tell you, this is Israel right up here. That's it. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's if you're following man. As if you're trusting in man. What does John's word say right here? It says, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To thy seed have I given this land. To your what? To your seed. Now, what's the first thing we want to put up here? What's the first thing we need to clarify? We need to clarify what does seed, right? What does seed mean? What's the true meaning? What's the true meaning of seed? Where's that blue marker? Maybe we'll go, go to the black. We're going to use the black. Let's just use the black marker right now. So this is going to be the, let's call this the Rastafari, right? Rastafari, right? And African, right? Zion. Zion slash Zionism. Zionism. Now, of course, we say it's not about ism and schism and so forth. So, well, no, it's not about ism and schism. You understand English, don't you? Or what other language you want to speak in? You want to speak in another language? You understand? You want to speak in another language? You want to, but would you understand if we started speaking another language? So, let's deal with the language and understand the language that we're speaking right here. So, you know, pertaining to, that which pertaining to. You said this is all interpretive. Let's understand this is all interpretive. What the word is saying right here in Genesis chapter 15 at verse 18, and let's go to this, Genesis, right, Genesis chapter 15, right, chapter 15, well, we touched on verses 13 and 14, that's the 400-year part. But let's touch on, well, what is I and I inheritance? What is our land according to Jah, right? We being the once lost but now found sheep of the house of Israel, the beta Israel of the West, the Falashas, the, those who were sent into exile in the West. Not speaking about the Falashas of the East. They were already at the African Zion because Zion is the palace of David. You understand? Know Therefore, David, a covenant was made with David that there would never lack a man to sit on the throne of David. You understand? Know Kedemawi Haile Selassie fulfills that. You understand? Know that there was never a lack of a man on, a throne, on the throne of David until the prophecy, until that would be complete. So Haile Selassie completes that aspect of our prophecy. So when we speak about Ethiopia, let's understand what we're speaking about. There's many different tribes and peoples and nations in Ethiopia. You understand? Know Yet, the Davidic or Solomonic dynasty, you understand, know is ours. We're not being affiliated with all these other tribes or whatnot like that. A lot of Rasta people get confused because they're not listening to the teaching of the King of Kings and they're not in I and I divine heritage. So they're putting out and saying a lot of things like even Pan Africanism. Yes, that's great, you understand, know for those who are in Africa, so forth and so on. The first thing we have to do is reclaim our birthright and live within the covenant. You know, so we have to establish our own foundation. You know what I'm saying? We can't really do anything while we're over here in the apartments, compartments on welfare or, or suffering police brutality, stop and frisk, and still with our, these artificial names and so forth and so on, and we're denied our basic human rights. We, first of all, must return to Jah, Jah's word. You know what I'm saying? Study and show I and I self-approved. First, get informed and then get involved. So let's touch on this right here. Let's touch on this. Genesis with, with Genesis 18, right? Genesis 18, Genesis 18 to, um, 18 to 21. 
though it's going to be some tribes there that we're not going to get to enumerate who these tribes were or who these tribes may be or who is related or descendant to these tribes today, although it's a very, very interesting study. If you really see, it's not us looking at this and making this this way or making that that way. No, it's following the evidence, following the evidence and following the facts and doing the math. You see, some folks, they have a preconceived notion, so they're trying to fulfill a preconceived notion. This is why God sends on them strong delusions so they believe a lie. Instead of us looking for the truth or looking for the evidence and seeking to prove the facts, you know what I'm saying? Okay, from this secular source, it says such and such. How does that, how does that compute with the Scripture? You know what I'm saying? And most of all, with that Holy Spirit that we have, with that with that essence of him, which is our life. He, he, he is in us. He wrote that law on our, in our heart. So when we break down that wall of hot yas of sin through that new birth, that rebirth, you know, in the Moshiach, then we can, we can be able to, to listen to that small, still voice. You, you know that, that voice that tells you something is wrong with this interpretation or something's wrong with that. It's like when I keep hearing the Zion, Zion thing. You know what I'm saying? They say, oh, it's a Zionist. Oh, it's a Zionist, so forth and so on. Don't you know that the Klan, the Ku Klux, the Ku Klux Klan and the neo-Nazis, their biggest, their biggest enemy is the blacks and Jews. You notice that? The Ku Klux Klan, they hated blacks and Jews. They probably say they hated Jews more. Why? Because some of the Jews, you know what I'm saying, on a certain level, were sympathetic to the blacks, and that's also part of the prophecy. So you'll focus on Revelation 2 and 9, where it says um, about the synagogue of Satan. Yeah, it does say that. Look at 3 and 9 for a moment, because it says that he will make them who are of the synagogue of Satan to bow down at I and I feet and know that he has loved I and I. You understand? It's those so-called righteous Jews. Now, some people say, what do you mean righteous Jews? So forth and so on. Listen. See, 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 this is all part of the, the strategy of the devil because they make you think, they say, oh, the Jews are doing it. It's the Jews. The Jews running everything. So what, what, what happens, you see an Orthodox Jew walking down the street, and then you go and attack them. Or you see um, some Orthodox Jewish boys going to yeshiva, and you go out and attack them because you've been, you've been hearing this propaganda. Oh, it's the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, Zion, it's the Jews. You understand? Know and if you were to get into the facts, it's really the Rothschilds and the bankers and a certain set of ones and ones who truly are not even Jewish in their belief system. You understand? Know they use the, the Jewish cloak, you understand? Know but it's actually them who are making it bad for some of their namesakes, white European folks, who are not the ethnic, they're not of the what? What's the word? What's that key word right there? They're not of the seed. You see, you know what seed is? Seed is race. Go look it up. Right? Seed is race, or you can look at it as sperm. Of what? Of whose sperm? Of the seed of Abraham, of the sperm of Abraham. That means of the descent of Abraham. Now, we know that Abraham, Abraham was a black Assyrian. And you can even look at the monuments from that time period and see it very clear. You know what I'm That these were dark-skinned Ethiopic and Ethiopian people because the ancient Ethiopians ruled as far, so-called as Babylon and as ancient India, so forth and so on, before, before the Indo-European, before the caste system, before the rise of so-called ancient, so-called white supremacy. You know what I'm saying? And India is a good case in point right there. That story about how these the the these um um um, um blonde hair, blue eyed warrior tribes came from the north and had upset the kingdom and set this caste system, which is the same thing as apartheid. It's the same thing as what was going on in America, so forth and so on. So that's how you know them by their fruit. All right. So the seed equals the race. Now, which particular race are we speaking about? You understand? Generally speaking, we're speaking about the black race, right, or the black sheep, right, of the house of Israel. So there's some confusion among some who are confused, 
Because on one hand, you know what I'm saying, we know that true Israel, the true Beta Israel, are identifiable by the Ethiopian Jews on one hand, and I and I on the next hand. You know what I'm saying? But we keep hearing Israel, 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 so forth and so on in the news. We keep hearing Jews, 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 Jews in the news. We keep hearing, you know, Zion, Zion, Zion. And none of these words, it, it seems like folks really understand. You know what I'm saying? None of these words folks understand. First of all, let's hear what Josh says about the territory that's given to his people here in Genesis chapter 15. In Genesis chapter 15, verse, um, verse 18, he says, um, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. Have you ever looked at this? Notice something. Let's get a pen or something like that. We can use as a as a as a simple um, as a simple pointer right now. All right. Let's use this pen right here. Let's first of all locate this. Okay. The river of Egypt is right here. Right, and the river of the Euphrates is right here. Okay, we got it identified. This is the river of the Euphrates, right? This is the river of the Euphrates, right? And this is the river of Egypt. Now, if you know, the river of Egypt goes all the way down, right? It goes through Ethiopia right here, right? And it goes all the way down to Lake Victoria, to, to, to the tip, the southernmost tip. And what's very interesting, all along this eastern coast, do we find he black Jewish people. You understand? Know black people, you understand, know who either knowingly identify themselves as Hebrews or Jewish people or whose customs are different than other so called African Hamitic tribes. And then we have black Shemite or black Shemitic tribes all along this river of Egypt. So you see, the river of Egypt doesn't stop at no artificial border that the European developed thousands of years later on. It doesn't stop there. So if we look from the river of Egypt going all the way down here, right, the river of Egypt going all the way down here on one end, and then we look over here at what's called the um, Euphrates. The Euphrates is over here. You see how the Euphrates goes down here? Euphrates goes here and empties into the Gulf. We hear about Kuwait. You understand? All of these people are settled and are inhabiting our lands. So that means between here and here, going all the way down, this includes Ethiopia right here, going all the way down to South Africa, you understand, is what has been given to the seed, the seed, the race, the black sheep, Beta Israel the seed of Father Abraham, according to Genesis chapter 15, verses 18 to 21. Because as we go further, it says, it says the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Cadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaim and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Gagashites and the Jebusites, a whole lot of ites, right? Right, a whole bunch of ites right there. All of these peoples in ancient times inhabited this land, the land from, let me show you this once again, the land from over here, this is the river Euphrates, let's, let's get it right here, the river Euphrates, right, the river Euphrates, right, from over here to over here, the river of Egypt, going all the way down here, right, including Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, you understand, and we have that in the Bible, this man was born there, going all the way down into South Africa, where, where we have Lake Victoria, right? And what's so interesting is that even today, there are still Hebrew, black Hebrew peoples, people that either say, yes, we are one of the tribes of the Beta Israel, a remnant. Many of them will, will confess that there were others that either went further to the west or some of their confessions and testimonies speak about when the Europeans or the Portuguese or the Mohammedans came and fought against them and some of their people ended up in slavery, you understand, which is fulfilling biblical prophecy, you understand. So all between these two rivers right here, everything between these two rivers right here going straight down, that means 
all of this land from here to here. That's why in the Bible it says, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants. Because going beyond that river, remember how I said we went from nation to nation? You understand know how, how we wandered from nation to nation? Because we went this way, this way. Even the Yoruba people say that they used to be in Jerusalem. The Yoruba people, their own legends. The Igbo, the Igbo also have legends of them, how they migrated. You understand how they went into Africa and they were fleeing all the violence, all the chaos. The same people we see today over there killing their own people like in Syria. You understand? You see what they're doing to their own people. So you can imagine what they did to people who didn't have their quite skin color and complexion and people who they looked down on. Can you imagine if you see them killing their own, like, in Syria, it, you know, and, 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 th and, this, and this guy, whoever this Samuel guy is, and it's not a personal thing, but he says something very interesting right here. Let's just touch on this for a moment. He says um, the Islamists are not targeting anyone. He says to us that it's the Zionists. Pray tell. Who you mean Zionists? Because I and I mature Rastafari. We know that according to the English language that we would probably be considered Zionists as well. Not a part of the Khazar or the European Jew um, agenda, but part of the King of Kings, Haile Selassie, the black Hebrew, the Ethiopian Hebrew Zion agenda or the restoration of the imperial monarchy of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, because we know that throne is the throne of David. You understand? Because that is where the throne of David was renewed, you understand, in the highlands of Ethiopia. We have our own testimony of that. Now, some of them will say, well, Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, it was just a diplomatic relationship. Like they were a fly of Beelzebub on the wall to see that or know that. So they're saying that our evidence is a lie, and they're just learning things and trying to figure it out, but they know the truth. You see, that shows whether you were born again or not. See, if you're born again, you, you, you even can't. That doesn't, that's not even logical, what they're saying to us. Basically, it's racist. They're saying they, they dismiss our evidence because if they were to admit our evidence, it would prove that just about everything they have said is false, is a lie. But that is the whole point of the story. That's the whole point of a revelation. You understand? That's the whole point of a mystery being revealed. But this person says, it is the Zionists, and he wrote it in caps. It is, the, it is Zionists who are behind the destruction, um, carnage, war-making happening in Africa, Middle East, America. The real Arabs, and I thought that was so interesting. Thank you very much, um, Samson12321, if that is your name or if that is your serial number. I don't know, but anyway, that's your personal thing. But what you said here, the real Arabs are too busy. The real Arabs are too busy, right? They're too busy being blown to bits in Syria. You mean they're too busy blowing themselves to bits. Why? Because they see this people rising. Brothers and sisters, this was the same thing when the Beta Israel had come out of Egypt and they were traveling through the wilderness. These people who were squatting on our God-given land began to get afraid. They began to, you know, it, it, it's like um, in the scripture that talks about when the trumpet was blown, how the enemies started to hack each other up. You understand? In other words, we thought our ancestors thought that we, they had to fight them. You understand? But the prophet said, blow the trumpet, and the trumpet was blown. And when the trumpet was blown, the enemies, instead of the enemies attacking Israel, the true black Israel, they started to attack each other. That's what you're seeing over there in the so-called Arab Spring. They know that there's a change. This time is not like, today is not like yesterday. It's a whole new world order. You understand? And it doesn't belong to any of them. The white man is trying to establish European foreign national, his new world. The, the, the Europeans are trying to do their thing. The English and the Americans are trying to do their thing. The Arabs are trying to do their thing. The Asian and Chinese are trying to do their thing. Everybody's trying to do their thing. And you know what? Where's the black man? People say, oh, what's up with the black man? Listen, the faithful black people, we know what this is about. You understand? We have to continue, you understand, to do.